what I'm gonna share today is going to sound strange. This is one of those like Ezekiel type of prophecies where you're like, all right, what is happening here? Hey y'all, this is Troy. So most of y'all know, I share a lot of visions on this channel, a lot of prophetic words I received from the Lord. And if you've ever operated in the prophetic gift at all, you know, it's a gift found in the New Testament, in scripture. The word of God says, I wish you all would prophesy. You know, the apostle Paul says that. It also says, earnestly desire the greater gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So there's a lot of encouragement in the New Testament for believers to operate in the gift of prophecy. Yet, if you've ever operated in this gift before, you know, prophecy can be a little strange. The experience of hearing from God can be a little odd, a little different. Some of the things, some of the ways that God chooses to speak can be a little different. I mean, we see examples of this all throughout scripture. If you go read the book of Ezekiel or Daniel or even like Isaiah or Jeremiah, you see all sorts of metaphors and imagery and sometimes phrases where you're like, God, why did you say it that way? You know, when God told Peter, hey, the Gentiles are... <laughs> able to receive salvation now through the gospel message. How did he tell him? He took him into a trance and he showed him a vision of a giant sheet coming down from heaven filled with animals, you know? And it's like, why not just tell him, you know, like why, why, why tell him that way? Right. And it's like, well, our wisdom is not God's wisdom. Right. And sometimes we just don't understand why God does things, but he knows exactly why he does things the way he does them. So all that to say, what I'm going to share today is going to sound strange. This is one of those like Ezekiel type of prophecies where you're like, all right, what is happening here? But I believe it's from the Lord and I've received confirmation from the Lord about this for myself personally. I would encourage you to test this word along with every single prophecy I share, test it the way that scripture encourages us to test prophecy. So I'm just going to jump right in. And this is what I saw. This was back on October 25th. This is a word about this election season, 2024, the United States presidential election. Some of this is going to still apply to everyone who's listening, a general audience, but most of it's going to apply more specifically to those living in the United States who are following this election. Um, I laid down because I oftentimes will just lay down next to my son. He's two years old just to try to help him fall asleep, you know, as I'm putting him down for bed at night and I'll sing songs to him. Sometimes I'll start singing worship songs. So I was just laying there and I was trying to get him to go to sleep and I was singing worship songs to God. And he was just like closing his eyes and slowly falling asleep. And I began to actually see a vision as I was laying there. What I saw was a vision of a banana cut in half and the peel was still on the that half that was left, but it was literally like someone just sliced it in half. And so if you have not seen any of my other Donald Trump videos, this is super weird, y'all. But back in 2020, 2021 and 2022, the Lord showed me a series of visions that had to do with Donald Trump and bananas. Super strange. And for a little while, I didn't understand, although I was sharing the messages God was giving me, I didn't understand what on earth the bananas had to do with anything, right? And yet God kept showing me these visions of bananas. And then suddenly in the news, the whole Donald Trump is creating a banana republic thing came out. And I don't believe that God was making a political statement and showing me these visions. I believe he was just telling me, hey, this is something that's going to come out in the news. It's going to be something people are talking about. And we saw that prophecy fulfilled. And even, even the pictures of bananas I was seeing, it made a lot more sense after the fact, after we saw what started to come out. And if you want to watch that video, I actually did a follow-up video where I show what I shared ahead of time and what happened eventually and how that prophecy was fulfilled. So I'm gonna put a link to that video below this one on YouTube so you can go watch that. But I believe the Lord is just following up on the whole banana vision thing. So I saw this banana cut in half, right? And I believe this specifically has to do with Donald Trump. I believe it has to do with even more than him though. It has to do with the movement that's surrounding him. And so what I heard later that night was this, the banana has lost its shape. It's lost its color, but it's not dead yet. It's still kicking, it's still rising again. So I believe he's talking about this movement, right, that helped to get Trump elected in 2016. And then I heard this, from the ashes of one banana will rise another. So again, I don't think he's talking about Donald Trump specifically, someone coming after him or something like that. I honestly believe God is talking about a movement that, that helped him to get elected in the first place. And the Lord is saying the same thing that happened in 2016, where you saw people unite around specific beliefs and a specific movement that was happening. He's saying something else is going to happen like that, but it's going to come after this one, right? This is what I saw next. I saw a vision of an old American wooden ship. I could see that it was made of wood, but it was old and it was a large ship. 
and it was flying in the air over an early American town. And I heard one of the historical cities, and I got this impression that it was one of the historical cities, but it was also very evident by what I was seeing. And then I saw as flags and banners were hanging off the sides of this ship that was literally like floating in the air. And I got this impression of like a homecoming or like a garrison of troops will come back from war and march through the town or whatever, and people will cheer that kind of idea. And this is the impression I got was that this had to do with the USS Concord. So now again, I know this is getting really weird, y'all. It's getting crazy, but I've prayed about this, y'all. I've gotten confirmation that this is the Holy Spirit speaking. It's He's using weird imagery. He's using symbolism. He's using metaphor here. I'm going to explain this vision in a second. It's strange, but you know, go read the Bible. Go read the Bible. You're going to have the same experience. Go read Daniel, the book of Daniel. And you're going to be, even Daniel himself was like, what does this mean, God? You know, like, and the angel tells him like, you don't need to know the interpretation right now. Just, just put it away. You know, like it's going to be useful later. You know, and he was, it says even at one point he was sick for days because he was like so dumbfounded by what he saw and heard. And so that's sometimes God speaks and we don't fully understand what we're seeing or hearing, but we need to be obedient with whatever he tells us to do with it nonetheless. And so I got this impression that this ship floating over this early American town had to do with the USS Concord, which makes sense because the battle that initiated the Revolutionary War was a battle that took place in Lexington and Concord. So I'm going to read this. This is from Wikipedia. It says the British marched into Lexington and Concord, intending to suppress the possibility of rebellion by seizing weapons from the colonists. Instead, their actions sparked the first battle of the Revolutionary War. So they marched in thinking this is going to be easy. We're going to push down this potential of a revolution. And instead, the very action of doing that sparked the Revolutionary War. And the Americans actually won that battle, surprising the British. And then eventually it led to the, the freedom of the colonies you know, from the, the British rule. So what does this have to do with this ship? So the USS Concord in 1828 was actually created and was named after this town that had to do with this, you know, the start of the Revolutionary War, Concord, uh, Massachusetts. And this was the very first ship to have that name, USS Concord. But here's the sad ending of this ship. So it did a lot of different stuff. I read about the history of it, but it ended up running aground on the coast of Africa, I believe in, in Mozambique, uh, that area. But it ran aground and they tried for a couple of days to get it afloat again and were unable to. They lost three crew members trying to get it back in the water and they eventually had to abandon it. The next thing I saw was a vision of these backpackers hiking through mountains and there was this beautiful green landscape. It was, it was just represents this idea of like freedom and the new, like the next thing, right? And this is what I heard the Lord say. He said, a ship has sailed and needs to sink if this is going to remain beautiful. So do I believe that everything that Donald Trump has ever done and said is right? Absolutely not. I do believe based on what I've heard from the Lord personally, that God has been using him in this nation for various reasons to do different things that God is working through that situation, that God has allowed some of the things that have occurred for specific reasons. But here is the issue that I believe God is addressing. And I'm going to say this real quickly and I'm going to be done. Okay. All of this strange imagery, all these strange visions, I believe are pointing to one simple truth. And it, it is this, that that ship that's floating over, over the, you know, it's coming back, it's floating over the, the city of Concord potentially, right? It's this idea of something that has sailed and something that has sunk, something that has passed away being found in our memory again, like us remembering it and trying to revitalize a movement based on the past, based on what's worked before. And that's not necessarily the best idea. This is what I heard the Lord say. He said, something's going to have to change. And it starts with my church taking a stand for what's right in a way that's honoring to the one that saved them. I believe that the church should be at the forefront of the fight for a child's rights, a, a, a child, you know, an unborn child's life. We should be at the forefront. And one of the ways we do that is by voting pro-life. But, but I believe the issue that the Lord is addressing here is the church should be taking a stand for what's right in a way that's honoring to Jesus. See, we should be asking the question, is this what Jesus would do? And if the answer is yes, then we, then we do it, right? But also, is this the way in which Jesus would do it? And sometimes we get that first thing right, but we miss the second one completely. And we justify the way we're doing something because of what we're trying to do. 
And y'all, the end does not always justify the means. Now, Jesus did say, you know, be innocent as doves and cunning as servants. So sometimes we're going to do things in a way that God's leading us to do it. And it's not going to make sense to everyone else. And that's fine if God's leading you to do it. But the end does not always justify the means. And the reason I can say that is because God did not just leave us here to figure this Christian life out on our own. He sent Jesus to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven of our sins, so that we could know God. And the way we know God now, the way we walk with him personally is through the Holy Spirit in our lives. So if we disobey God and we and we fight against the ways of God and culture, that's absolutely going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. But if we also don't get to what God is telling us to do his way, that's going to be grieving to him as well. And that's the problem that's happening within the church when it comes to politics in a lot of ways. I believe we are missing the mark because we're grieving the Holy Spirit based on the fact that we're trying to justify the means through the end. And then the Lord asked me to encourage everyone listening to ask this question when it comes to politics, when it comes to 2024, when it comes to who you vote for, when it comes to what you support, what issues you stand up for, when it comes to how you interact with people online, on social media, or even with your family or friends, or your sphere of influence. God said, ask this question. This is what we should all be asking. How do we do this God's way? And then how do we keep ourselves in line with your will, God, despite the culture pulling us in every direction? Lord, how do we do this your way? How do we keep ourselves in line with your will? A lot of times we get out of the will of God simply by the way we react emotionally to what the culture is doing and saying. Because when our emotions take over, listen, when the emotions take over, that means the Holy Spirit, his hand is not on the steering wheel anymore. I, I am a firm believer that God is wanting to use the church in the United States to do something miraculous in 2024. I'm a firm believer of that. But if the church, if we have our hands on the steering wheel, it's not going to happen, church. We've got to take our hands off. We've got to let the Holy Spirit lead. We've got to say, Lord, I don't want to just do the right thing. I want to do this for your glory. I want to honor Jesus as I'm doing this. And I want the world to see the love of Jesus Christ through my actions, the way I say things, the way I respond, the way I promote things, the way I support people. I don't want this to be about me being proven right. I don't want this to be about me getting what I want. I don't want this to be about me and my side winning. I want this to be about glorifying Jesus in his name and the world getting to see that. So I get it, y'all. This is, this is a weird, weird, weird message. These are weird visions and things. I'm simply sharing what I'm hearing the Lord saying, what I believe God is speaking through this. This is Ephesians 4.30. It says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And then look at this, okay? He follows it up, and you might ask that question, well, how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? Okay, 31, the next verse says, All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. See, Jesus was the perfect example. He's the perfect model. And no, none of us are ever going to get it as perfect as Jesus did. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can do a whole lot better than what we're doing now. You see, because when Jesus was, when he was hanging on the cross and they, people were literally putting him to death and he didn't deserve it, they were, they were wrongly accusing him. They were wrongly condemning him and they were wrongly putting him to death. Jesus as he's hanging there and he has the power to stop it. He chooses not to because he loves us so much that he wanted to make a way for us to come home. As he's hanging there, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And I just sense the Holy Spirit saying this right now. He wants to teach a part of his body to be able to say that this year in a way that we've, we've never been able to say it before. And people are going to see the light of Jesus Christ in our eyes. They're going to see the light of Jesus Christ in our walk. In our, and they're going to hear it in our words. They're going to say, something's different about you. I've never had someone treat me that way before. I've never had someone share that kind of love with me before when I didn't deserve it. And it's going to be an opportunity for us to not just do the right thing when it comes to culture, but to do it the right way and to share Jesus with people in the process. I hope this has been an encouraging video. I love you all so much. I'll see you next time.